My talk is, what's so good about local organic food anyways? All right, Rick. Hello. Hello. My name is Burke Bear, and I'm 12 years old. I think this is such a great opportunity for me to get to come and speak at Bonfire Heights here today. Now, when I first started learning about this industrialized food system that we have that is hidden from us so much these days, it made me want to share with everyone that I met and shout it from the mountaintops. It was really eye-opening for me. And they would ask me when I would tell them, and they'd ask me this, what's so good about local organic food anyways? And so I decided to look for unique things, things that people would not have even thought about. And there are things that people know about already, like the massive overuse of pesticides and herbicides and chemical fertilizers. But there are other facts about those things that are not well known. Here's one that I found out about pesticides the other day. Chemical pesticides bind to our body fat. And once absorbed, they may stay there for a lifetime. Over 350 different chemicals can, be, can accumulate in our body fat. According to the Center for Disease Control's report, Obesity now affects over 17% of all children and adolescents in the U.S., triple the rate from just one generation ago. How sad is that? Herbicides not only kill weeds, they kill the soil fungi. And these little fungi release an acid that dissolves the dirt and makes the minerals in there small enough to be absorbed by the rootlets of the plants. Most of the plant's nutrients comes from the minerals. So without these soil fungi, the nutritional quality drops down a lot. Rotating crops is very important because it replenishes the nutrients in the soil. And one thing that I've learned about industrialized agriculture is that they grow the same crop in the same place over and over again. And that's why conventional farmers must use chemical fertilizers to keep their plants alive. The difference between them and sustainable farmers is that sustainable farmers realize that this isn't healthy for the soil or for the plants, which eventually become our food. Conventional fertilizers mainly just put back in the NPK, which stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those are the main building blocks for plant life, but there are dozens of other nutrients needed to provide us with real healthy food. In Organic farmers, they use compost for fertilizer. I know that they're, my organic farmer friends are constantly using different types of fertilizer as compost to, to make their soil the most nutrient-dense form of bi biomass they can. And just one handful of, um, of soil fertilized by organic compost is a whole biosystem full of tiny organisms, which in turn provide us with healthy organic produce. And so really, now we've seen how the chemicals, the pesticides, the herbicides in the fertilizers have an effect on our food, which in turn have a pretty harmful effect on our body. And one thing that a lot of people don't know about organic food is, is about the land. More and more of these small farmers are putting in their land into what's known as a land trust. A land trust protects the land from ever being turned into a subdivision or an industrial park. So the question is, what's so good about local organic food anyways? And the answer is filled with diverse answers that addresses many parts of a whole, from fuel to food to health to community to water to food safety, to food security, and the environment. Take, for example, a small-sized U.S. city of about half a million people. If each of those families or households just spent $5 of their weekly grocery bill on sustainable local food, they would flood the local market with over $30 million annually. Tell me that doesn't make a difference. So I hope that I have interested you in this subject where we can go back to our communities and have conversations with our friends, family, peers, and neighbors about food that, in a way that engages them and, makes, and hopefully makes a small difference in their 
food buying habits. I've noticed that most of the speakers here this weekend were normal people who decided to make a difference through activism. And now I hope that you will go back to your communities too and spread the word about organics in, this, in the industrialized food system that is hidden from us so much these days, all to make a difference. And I'm so grateful for you guys to listen to me tonight, today. And I would be so happy if you guys would have any questions and I will answer them definitely for you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, We now get an honor to ask him questions. Pick his brain. Pick his brain. How can we lower the price of organic food? Because some families yeah. are still too expensive. Definitely. Um, yes, one thing is that it's supply and demand is the main thing. Um, it's not, it costs way less to grow organic food than conventional food at these times. But conventional food is subsidized by governments. And it's just, if we can make organic food cheaper, that's where we can have it. But we need to have the demand for it. Without people demanding organic fruit and food and fresh vegetables, it will not be there. So we need to say that to the grocery store that I'm not going to buy your food unless it's organic and I have this, this, and this, and this. So that's, that's my thoughts on that subject. You're welcome. Next question. Uh, you, you gave the wonderful, easy tip of if we all spend $5, what a difference that would make in a community. And I know I have a, a big, a huge reach to spread that message. And it's those simple messages that I think the average community could pick up on to make those kind of changes. $5 of your money going towards organic, sustainable uh, local farmers, you know, easy to do. Are there any other suggestions that you have that we can all make to make well, a difference? Definitely. A great way is that I've always been doing is that organic farmers these days, they are not having a lot of money. And so I have recent, or I have always, once I've gotten into this movement, I will go to the farms and I will volunteer. And not just to help out the farmer, but so I can see up close and personal where the vegetables I get from or the meat that I get from. And it's just a wonderful way to get closer to your food and get closer to the production. So, yes. Hi. Um, so last night we talked about something that really got my attention about um, how what he was saying, how organic food, it is a little bit more expensive. But what was your comment about how, like, it's better to pay a little bit more than to go to the hospital and kind of maybe touch on that because that was really interesting to me. So one of my quotes is, is that people will always bring up to me, oh, organic food is too expensive. I don't have that kind of money. I don't want to pay for it. It's blah, 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 giving me all these excuses. And so I've come. <laughs> and so I'll say to them is that. I say you can either pay the farmer or you can pay the hospital because when I find all these different health effects and side effects of uh, fast food, high fructose, corn syrup, all additives, colorings, you don't, would you rather go through the emotional pain of having a hospital bill and having it a $100,000 hospital bill or would you rather have an extra, just an extra $100 on your grocery bill every week? And so that's what I've found and I've found that And so I've definitely found that we can all make a difference by just making different for, um, different, um, d different chooses, choices. So I believe that we all vote with, a, with our dollar bill. It's, um, we go to the ballots every day when we go to the supermarket. So we need to show that we were voting for organics and not for the uh, industrialized corporations. Burke, I, I really enjoyed the conversation we had last night, too, and I know what affected Chelsea and myself, especially because my favorite uh, candy bar is Snickers. And you, you, yeah, you touched on chocolate. Can you just quickly touch on that again? Because that freaked me out. 
one thing that I've learned, um, Hershey's, um, the company, they actually have a contract with API. It, it, I believe it stands for American um, Protein Industries. And what they do is that they take the protein out of old chicken legs, parts, bones, cartilage, and they will render it down, and they sell it to Hershey's, and Hershey's puts it in their chocolate as a byproduct, yes. Um, this company gets paid to take the chicken pieces off from the chicken pro pro uh, producing plants, and then they reduce it down into this gunk, and they put it in chocolate, so. I have time for two more questions, and he had asked for one. I have a comment to make. Uh, and there's uh, two movies that are d uh, DVDs, and they're highly rentable. Everybody get your pencils out and take a note. Right, right, right. Ink and King Corn. Those two movies will inspire you to readdress what you are putting into your bodies. Uh, it's exactly what, oh, what this young <laughs> what this young man is is conveying to us, and I am totally blown away that a twelve-year-old has the wisdom of somebody much, much older than he. Thank you. We got Chris. Hi, Bert. I was just wondering how you feel about factory farms. Uh, factory farms to me is a very horrible concept. Um, they see bigger, better, faster, cheaper, and I don't believe that. Um, the, the way that the animals treated, are treated, that's a horrible way to me. And I'm not a vegetarian, I eat meat. But when I do eat meat, I try to eat the good, wholesome, free-range, grass-fed, little farmer guy, hillbilly back in the hills. And so I try, to, I try to eat that good organic stuff instead of the factory farm is what I eat. So, I mean, I try to eat the good stuff instead of the bad. One last question. <clears throat> um, so the end result that we're hoping for is that people be eating healthier, fresher foods. Um, what are some steps or suggestions that you may have for lower socioeconomic areas that may not be able to make that instantaneous jump to organic produce? Always a great way of getting produce is if you have a backyard, have a small little garden where you can make your own food. I mean, this year I asked for my birthday a big um, thing of heirloom seeds because I love to grow garden. I love to grow my garden. And so if people want a good organic produce, they can go get it in a way that they can either grow it in their backyard or they can have some tomato plants off their porch. So really it all adds down to how you really, if, if you want it that bad, then you can go look for it for sure. And there's easy ways of finding it. There's great websites like localharvest.com, um, eatwild.com. Uh, Eat Well Guy. They're all great websites that go on there. You can actually put your zip code in there and you, they'll show you like all the organic farms within like 50 miles away. And so it's a great way to be able to find your local produce, your best bet to getting good, healthy, sustainable food. Thank you, Burke Bear. Thank you. By the way, if you want to visit my website, I have a website, Burke on the Farm, B-I-R-K-E-O-N, the, on the farm. And it's my website. It has a way of contacting me. I also have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, and, a, um, and all that good stuff. So you can contact me through that. And thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, everybody.